So in solving stoichiometry problems, it's important to remember how we recognize we are dealing with a stoichiometry problem in the first place. And the way that we do that is to look at the fact that we are starting with 15.55 grams of H2, and we are asked to convert to grams of H2O. So you can see you're starting in units of H2, but ending in units of H2O, which is a completely different substance. So this should tell you that it's a stoichiometry problem, which means that we need two things to solve it, and that is a balanced chemical reaction and a BCA table. So I'm going to use my problem to write the balanced chemical reaction. It tells me that H2 is reacting with O2, and that is going to create H2O. So now that I have a balanced chemical reaction, the next step is to draw a BCA table. So remember, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a table, and it is important to make sure that you divide your table up to where you have a section or a box under each reactant and each product. Remember that B stands for before. That's how much of each reactant or product you have before the reaction. C stands for change. That just factors in how is each reactant or product changing over the course of the reaction. And A stands for after, which represents how much reactant or product do we have after the reaction has occurred. So when I'm solving this, it's important to always remember that we're asked to find how many grams of H2O are produced. So what we're trying to find is how many grams of water do we have after the reaction has completed. So this is our key box that we want to figure out what number goes there. I'm going to start by filling in the B row first before. The first thing I'm always going to put for my uh, products is zero. I have zero of my products before the reaction has started because before the reaction has started, no product has been made. It's kind of like in a recipe if you're making cookies. Before you've made your cookies, you don't have any cookies to begin with. The next thing to note is that I have 15.55 grams of H2. One thing that you should remember from our other video is that you cannot put grams in the table. So only moles, so only moles can go in the table. So because of this, I have to convert these grams into moles. So I'm going to convert 15.55 grams into moles, and the molar mass of H2 is just 2.02. .02. So when I do 15.55 divided by 2.02, .02, that gives me 7.70 moles. So I know that I have 7.70 moles of H2, and so I'm gonna put 7.70 in my table. That's how many moles of H2 I'm starting with. Notice that the problem says we have excess O2. In this case, that means we can ignore anything about O2 because the question tells us we have as much as we need. So now that I have the before of my reactants and products filled in, I'm gonna to go to my change. One thing to know is that the change for your reactants is going to be negative and the change for your products is going to be positive. This is because I'm going to lose or use up reactants in order to gain or make products. So the amount of reactants you have over the course of the reaction is always going to go down and the amount of products that you have over the course of a reaction is always going to go up. That's why my reactants are going to be negative and my products are going to be always be positive. The next thing we need to put in here is an x. In math, if we don't know a number, we can represent the number using a variable, and in this case, I'm going to use x. I don't know how much the reactants and products are changing by, so I'm going to signify it with the letter x. The last thing to put in this change box is the balance or the coefficient from the balanced chemical reaction. This is important because this is telling us the factor by which our reactants and products are changing. So I'm using two H2s and one O2 to make two H2Os. So I'm not just losing one X, I'm losing two X, and I'm not just making one X here, I'm making two X. The last thing we have to do is fill in the after because we need to complete one of our columns. It's going to be important that you always remember B plus C equals A. What I have before plus my change is always going to equal what I have at the end or what I'm left with after the reaction has completed. Our chemical reactions are always going to proceed until we run out of reactant. 
So this chemical reaction will occur and it will keep going until you have no or zero H2 left. So I know after my reaction is completed, I'm gonna have zero product left over. Now that I have this column set up, I can set up the equation 7.70 minus 2x equals zero. And I can solve this equation for x because the way that I figure this number out here is to know what x represents. So I can move this over. So 7.70 equals 2x. And I can divide by both sides by 2. And I can get that x equals 3.85. So now that I know that x is equal to 3.85, all I have to do is plug it into my equi equation here. So I'm going to plug this in. So 0 plus 2 times 3.85, I can put that in my calculator, and that equals 7.70. Now it's important to remember that this represents the moles of H2O that I have after the reaction has completed. But remember the question wanted grams. So all I have to do is take these moles and convert them to grams. So I'm just taking the molar mass of H2O and multiplying it by 7.7. .7. And that is going to give me an answer of 138.75 grams of H2O. That is how many grams of H2O are produced if we were to start with 15.55 grams of H2. Here in our next example, we'll look at the problem, how many moles of hydrogen gas can be produced if 0.57 moles of hydrochloric acid react with excess solid zinc according to the following chemical reaction. So this problem go ahead and gives us our balanced chemical reaction, which can be one hint that it's a stoichiometry problem. Again, the other hint is that I'm starting with 0.57 moles of hydrochloric acid, and I'm asked for moles of hydrogen gas. So I'm starting with hydrochloric acid, but I'm ending with hydrogen gas. These are two different substances, which tells me this is a stoichiometry problem. I already have my balanced chemical reaction here, so the only other thing that's missing is a BCA table. So I can draw my table, again, making sure that we have space under each reactant. And I'm just going to fill my table in. Remember, you always have zero of your products before the reaction has started. So I'm going to fill those in there for H2 and Z and Cl2. And then I'm going to take this number and plug it in to my table. Now, notice this number is already in moles, so I don't have to convert it. I can just plug it straight into the table. It's 0.57 moles of hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. So I know I'm starting with 0.57 moles of HCl. It says I have excess zinc, and so we can just ignore the zinc column for this problem. Next, I'm going to fill in the change. So remember, you're going to lose your reactant, and you are going to gain your product. We're always going to lose X and gain X. And then it's important that you put the balance coefficient from the chemical reaction. So here I have a 2, so this is minus 2X. Here this is only a 1, so it's just plus X. And here it's only a 1. So it's only plus x there. Again, let's pause for a moment and remember what we're asked to find. We're asked to find moles of hydrogen gas. So really, what we're looking for is what number goes in that box right there. The last thing to remember to fill our table in is that you're going to have zero of your reactant after the reaction has finished. So now that I have an entire column filled in, I can put 0 0.57 minus 2x equals 0. And I can solve this equation for x. 0 0.57 equals 2x. I can divide both sides by 2. And 0.57 divided by 2 tells me x is 0 0.285. So now what I can do is I can plug in my x value, 0 0.285. 0 0.285. Now, the question doesn't ask anything about Z and Cl2, so I don't really need to worry about filling that in. So all I'm going to focus on is here. And I know that 0 plus 0.285 gives me 0.285. The question asks for moles of hydrogen gas, and the numbers from the table are already in moles, so I know that this answer is just 0.285 moles of H2. In our last problem, we're going to look at the question, determine the mass of lithium hydroxide that is produced 
when 12.87 grams of lithium nitride reacts with excess water according to the following chemical reaction. So again, this is a stoichiometry problem. Part of the reason I know this is because they go ahead and give me the balanced chemical reaction. But again, I'm looking at 12.87 grams of lithium nitride, and they're asking me the mass. We know mass is grams, so grams of lithium hydroxide. Lithium nitride and lithium hydroxide are two different substances, so that's my clue to know this is a stoichiometry problem. So I'm going to draw my BCA table. Remember that it's important that we give every single reactant and product a box in our table. I'm going to go ahead and put zero for both of my products because we know that no product has been formed before the reaction has started. I'm then going to go on my problem and put this number in. Remember, I can't put 12.87 grams into the table. I have to first convert that to moles. So 12.87 grams of lithium nitride. I'm going to convert that from grams into moles. So I need to find the molar mass. Mass. So I need to find the mass of three lithium. So that would be 6.94 times three. So that would tell me 20.82. And I know that the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01. So I know that this gives me a mass of 34.83 for lithium nitride. So then when I convert this to moles, 12.87 divided by 34.83, that tells me that I have 0 0.370 moles of lithium nitride. So now I can take this value and plug it into my table. So 0 0.370, and that's lithium nitride. The question says I have excess water, so that means I can ignore the column for water. I'm then going to fill in the change. So I'm losing reactant, and I'm gaining product as the reaction is, is going. I look at my here in my balanced chemical reaction, the coefficient here is a one, so this is just minus x. The coefficient here is three, so that's plus three x. And then the coefficient here is a one, so that would just be plus x as well. The last part to filling in the table is putting in a zero in for your reactant. So after the reaction has finished, I know that I don't have any reactant left over. So now I can set up my equation 0 0.370 minus x equals zero and I know that x is going to equal 0 0.370. The question asks for mass of lithium hydroxide, so I don't really need to worry much about NH3. All I can do is focus on lithium hydroxide. So I'm gonna plug in my x value, 0 0.370, to solve zero plus three times 0 0.370, and that would give me three, so three times 0 0.370 would give me 1.11. Again, this is moles. Remember, the only number that you can get from the table is moles. So all I have to do is take 1.11 moles of lithium hydroxide, and I convert, can convert that to grams. So I find the molar mass of lithium hydroxide, which would be lithium is 6.94, oxygen would be 16, and hydrogen is 1.01. .01. And that gives me a molar mass of 23.95 grams and I can multiply that by 1.11 to get a total of 26.58 grams of lithium hydroxide.